Hey guys, Double Wide Six here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a little video on how to hook up a water heater timer. I did a little bit of research and I found uh, it was pretty evident on the internet that you can save anywhere from six to ten dollars a month by having a water heater timer. So I'm going to be hooking up an uh, Intermatic timer. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that timer, the model, and everything about it, how I ended up with that one uh, towards the end of the video. But I'm going to show you, um, take you right through the install. For today's project, we're going to be hooking up an Intermatic digital electronic timer, and it's model number EH40. All right, so here's a look at the water heater, and as you can see, we have our 10 gauge wire coming in. I pulled out the insulation. It's that orange wire, and it runs down here to the tank, and uh, we need to hook up our timer, and the first stupid thing about this is I noticed no knockouts at the top of the box. So this box is going to mount here on the wall, and we're going to end up having to run the wire down the wall past the box and into the bottom of the box or I could put a knockout in the left side or the bottom right side. So that's what we're going to have to do. I, I didn't want to run the wires down the concrete because there's no way to attach them so I'm going to have to figure out something. The good news is I brought my mini helper today. Right Bips? You going to help? Yeah. Alright. First thing we want to do is turn off our power to our water heater. So it's a double 30 amp breaker, which is correct for a 10 gauge wire. I'm also gonna double check um, that our power is off at the water heater. So I'm checking with my meter. I'm gonna check both legs just to make sure that we're safe here. And we have a total of 2.6 volts. Well, I don't know why we have any voltage, but 2.8 volts, that's nothing. I wonder if there's a battery or something in this thing. I'm not sure, but the power's off. So my solution was to actually mount a board on the wall that I can attach that box. That way I can attach the wire to the wall and it'll look nice and clean. On the uh, bottom of the box, I have two knockouts, and what we're going to do is I'm going to knock out each one. One, two. Uh, I probably could just use one, but I want it to be a nice, clean looking install, so I'm going to run one wire from the heater, one from the panel. In our knockout holes in the bottom of the box, we want to secure our two wire clamps just like this and tighten them up. Luckily, my wire was long enough, so I was able to cut it, and I still have some leftover wire, so I didn't have to buy any extra wire for this project. So now I'm just using some one inch drywall screws secure my box to our board. Now I'm just carefully stripping the wires. and we're going to feed them through our wire clamps. So at this point I split the wire and you can see I've fed it into the box through the clamps. I've now taken the grounds and I'm tying the grounds into the grounding clamp. So we're going to snug that thing up. We want to do all this before we put the timer in the box. So now I'm ready to insert the timer back in the box. So here's a look at the digital timing unit. And as you can see, it's numbered one through six. So if we go and we look at the book, what it's telling us is 
line one and line two, that's your power coming from your breaker, are going to go to screw one and screw two. It doesn't matter which wire goes to which because they're both hot. Okay, and that'll give us our 240 volts. And then from there, you can see line one is going to terminal three. So you're going to use a jumper wire that links line one to line three. So terminal one to terminal three. And uh, terminal two is line two that has to go to terminal five. And if you look at the load, that is your water heater. The water heater is going to tie on to lugs four and six. Doesn't matter which two hot wires from the water heater go to four and six. They're both hot. They give us some little piggy tail wires. Um, these little jumpers, um, basically you have solid gauge and you have stranded. And since I have solid gauge wire, I want to stick with solid solid gauge so I have two solid gauge wires to use as jumpers one other really important factor that I didn't mention is that if you only have uh, a load that's 120 volt load you don't need to add the jumpers so you want to read about that in in your manual if you're working with 120 volts as opposed to 240 so here's the timer all hooked up. We'll open up the door. And inside here you can see the wiring. I've removed the plastic cover for clarity. But basically here's what we have. Our wire coming in from our panel. This is going, line one's going to lug one. And then we have a jumper from lug one that goes to lug three and then our other hot wire is going to line two and there's a jumper that goes to line five and then our two load wires one of them goes to lug four and that goes out to the hot water heater and one of them goes to lug six and that goes out to the hot water heater and our two grounds are locked into the ground terminal in the back now i'm going to install the plastic cover and this will help keep it safe if the door is open so I flipped the breaker back on and as you can see the units all in place and when I hit the breaker this red light came on that says loads so that means power is going through there and it's heating the water heater must have cooled off in the time it took to uh, hook this thing up all right guys, so hopefully I inspired you a little bit to uh, install a water heater timer. It's very easy to do as you can see in the install. But what I'm gonna do now is just take a couple minutes and tell you why basically I decided to put in a water heater timer. First of all, um, I did a lot of research on the internet and what I learned is that a water heater cost me about $50 a month. And that's a 4,500 watt water heater, which is an 80 gallon unit. And uh, that's running pretty much all the time, 24 hours. And I pay, I think, 0.12 kilowatt hour on my power bill for power. So basically, there's a little chart I found online. It costs about, as I said, $50. And uh, I looked up water heater timers. They make analog ones and they make digital ones. The problem with the analog is a lot of them, at least the ones I looked at, you couldn't set every single day of the week. A lot of us have the same schedule Monday through Friday, but then a different schedule on the weekend. So with an analog one, you're either going to have to leave it on more or you're going to run out of water on the weekends. So with the digital timer, you can turn on and off the timer as many times as you want in a day. Uh, there's no pins that you have to plug in or anything like that and uh, it's very simple to program and like I said it gives you more ability to work with your schedule. Um, basically what I did is I figured out that um, I, you know my schedule basically we want that water heater coming on in the morning around 5 a.m. and then it can turn off at 7 a.m. And then we return from work around 4, so it comes on around 3. 
so that the water's warm when we get home. And then I have it turn it off at 10 at night and it's off from 10 till about uh, five in the morning. So I did all the math and there's 172 hours in a week and by setting that schedule Monday through Friday, um, I got it down to 89 hours a week that the water heater will be on. Also, I have Saturday and Sunday program, so the thing comes on at 7 a.m. and it stays on until 10 p.m. It's on all day, and then it just goes off for six hours. So I have it up for uh, like 18 hours, basically running on the both weekend days, and. Uh, you know, I've really cut my time almost in half, but the problem is when it's off for a long time, the water heater takes some time to heat up the water, okay? Normally, a water heater only runs about three hours a day. So, you know, it, it tops off the water maybe every 45 minutes. It just warms up for uh, three minutes or so, and then, you know, once it's at temperature, it, you know, just lets it, stay warm until it needs to heat up again like a thermostat so now by using the water heater timer it's going to actually use more energy when it heats up because your water is going to get colder but all that said and done um basically you can save anywhere what i read on the internet six to ten dollars per month so the timer i got that thing it cost 72 dollars delivered i think and uh, it'll pay for itself in one year if uh, I use the lower end, which is uh, save $6 a month. So that's basically why I got it. You know, I don't really enjoy wasting power, so I thought it would be, you know, a good investment for our home. Also, um, th the next best thing that you can do is insulate your water heater. So I'm going to get one of those blankets that are about $25. That'll go around the water heater and that'll help, you know, prevent it from getting too cold too fast. And uh, finally, the last thing that I learned that's really important is that the uh, thermal relief valve on the water heater is probably the spot where you lose the most heat. So uh, where that valve comes out of your water heater in case it gets too hot, and it doesn't blow up like they did on Mythbusters, uh, what, what you want to do is insulate that valve so you can cover that with pipe foam and you, know, you don't want to block it or anything, but uh, you know, by keeping that insulated a little bit, that's going to help uh, cut back on your heat loss as well. So anyhow, I'm Double Wide Six, and uh, if you like this video, you might like some of my other videos, you can check out my channel, and as always, thanks for watching, and please subscribe.